Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me here in the KEXP studios. I'm Cheryl Waters, and you've got it tuned to listener-powered KEXP. You can find us at 90.3 FM at kexp.org and also streaming on our free mobile apps. I'm so excited to welcome Screaming Females live in the KEXP studios. Thanks so much for coming today. Thanks for having us. Love the new album, Desire Pathway, and you're going to rip it with some songs from that today. It's Screaming Females live on KEXP. Take it away.
You're listening to Screaming Females live on KEXP.
Screaming Females, Ripping It Up in the KEXP Studio, songs from the album Desire Pathway. That is awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. You've been making music for a really, really long time together as a band. Can you give me the origin story? Um, I, I grew up with Mike, who's playing the bass, so I've known him my whole life. And then I met Jarrett in college. Um, and uh, Mike and I were in another band that kind of was like dissolving and we lost a drummer. And so when Jarrett introduced himself to me and said he played drums, I just asked him to play, not knowing if he was any good or not. <laughs> so he joined our band for like a second. And then um, there was a, a, some clientele moved around. <laughs> Different people left, came and went, and eventually we just settled on the three of us. You feel really connected, it sounds like, to the place that you live and where you're from. Can you talk a little bit about that connection and what it's given to you as musicians? Uh, we started our band in New Brunswick, New Jersey, which is like right in the middle of New Jersey, which some people would want to argue about, but I think it's in the middle. <laughs> um, and that's where Rutgers University is, so there's a lot of students there who want to participate in uh, seeing shows and looking at art and uh, I would say that by mostly Rutgers doesn't really provide those spaces for their students. Um, and so they make, they create the spaces for themselves. And the New Brunswick has a very rich history of having basement shows. And um, we were very active participants in that community. So we threw a lot of basement shows in our respective houses and other people's houses and bands from all over the world would come to play in our really dirty basements. <laughs> it sounds like a really supportive and vital community. Yeah, I would say for it was the to date probably the greatest couple of years of my life. You've been a pretty busy band for a really long time. You do everything. I mean, you write, record, and you've been on this tour cycle for a super long time. Just write, record, tour, write, record, tour, and then we of course had a couple of years where that just kind of came to a halt. How did that impact the band? Um, I mean, it was it was devastating, you know, that we uh, there aren't a lot of um, things to support like independent contractors and they lose their jobs. And that's what we are. We're gig workers. So we just kind of were sent home with with no idea of what was going to happen next, like a lot of people. Um, and uh, we all, all our childhoods were completely just this is this is our identity. Screaming females is our identity. So. I know, I can only speak for myself, I didn't really know how to function um, without screaming females. So uh, it was really difficult to ha take a break that long. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it just really encapsulates um, so much of your life. You, know, you do the shirts, you do the artwork, you do pretty much everything, even sometimes you've booked shows. So I imagine that just halting that was just a big, big change for you, but you were able to get these songs done. You, I understand you had them ready or written um, before the pandemic. When were you able to go into the studio and finally get them out? Um, we had the bulk of them written prior to COVID even being like something that anyone had any idea was coming down the pipeline. Um, and so then when we were kind of trapped at home, we did a little bit of remote writing through email and a couple of those songs wound up on the record. And it wasn't until probably like some some of the songs by the time we got in the studio were like four or five years old because of COVID, obviously. Um, and we went to Pachyderm Studios um, with Matt Bayless from Seattle and uh, committed them to record. You've worked with Matt, by my count, I think on at least three records. And we love him, obviously. And it seems like you do, too. Same. What what about working with Matt do you like so much? What gels there for you? Um, Matt was the first um, producer and engineer we ever worked with. We had been a band for over a decade by the time we decided to work with Matt, and we've never really had like a fourth person weigh in on songwriting. So we kind of decided by the time we did Rose Mountain, which is our fifth album, sixth, Six. I don't know. Six. Um, <laughs> sixth album, <laughs> that it was time maybe to try something new and have someone else help us uh, like make little adjustments to songs. and. Um, we knew that Matt could record, like, had a really wide dynamic range when it came to, like, the artists that he worked with. Um, and he just happened to be on the East Coast, so we hung out and ate sandwiches. And he said that 
he would like to do the record. And um, yeah, he's got a lot of good ideas and he's fun to work with. And you decamped in Minnesota. You mentioned Pachyderm Studios. Some albums I really love were made there. Nirvana's In Utero, PJ Harvey's Rid of Me. What, what drew you to that studio? Um, since this was our third record with Matt, we kind of wanted to it, not just do the same thing that we had done for the previous two records. So we asked him if there was ever a studio that he kind of dreamed of going to um, one day, and Pachyderm was one of them. So we got in touch, and then we wound up there. <laughs> and was it fun? Was there anything unexpected that you got out of the studio that you didn't know would be there? I got to say that most of the time when we were making a record, I don't really get to do anything except record stuff. Uh, there's a pool in the basement um, that's quite frightening because it's kind of painted. I think the basin of the pool is painted black or a very dark color, so it's very spooky. And then behind the spooky pool is a very spooky sauna. So I, I would say overall the house is, is pretty spooky, but also beautiful. And did you go in the pool? I did. Okay. It was scary. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, these days, you've been a band for a super long time, way before social media was a really important way to promote what you were doing. And now that there's such a heavy focus on content creation and social media, you all do pretty much everything in the band. I mean, how has that changed what you do? I mean, do you enjoy that or you just kind of grin and bear it and you're like, it's just what we have to do now? Um, I would say... I mostly grin and bear it. I just want to make sure, and I think I can speak for all of us, that people know where the show is and when it is, and that just seems to be the pathway that people take to find out where the show is nowadays, and that's fine. Um, so I use it for very utilitarian purposes. I, it's not really a creative outlet for me personally in any way. <laughs> it is a way to be in direct contact with yeah. your fans, so and, which is neat. Yeah, I think that's invaluable. It's, that's been pretty cool, but uh, we're old enough that we remember not even that the word social media that term wasn't even in our like lexicon so well speaking of being in direct contact with your fans you're on your i think your first headlining tour in the past couple of years right now how has it been to i know you've played some other shows but how's it been to be back out there on the road connecting with people face to face seeing all your friends um it's been really interesting especially with the big bookmark that covid put in our touring career because now there are a lot of really young kids at the show who have grown up listening to us, which makes me feel like a very old lady, <laughs> um, but it's also so cool and I love seeing them there and I'd love seeing like the people who have always come to see us even when we were little kids are still coming to the show so, and they're bringing their children and stuff. It's just like, it's a very wholesome family event, I would say. <laughs> well, it's great to see that this man has had such great longevity and always excited for a new record from you. Thank you for bringing the songs from Desire Pathway here to the KEXV studios. Thanks for having us. I'm Cheryl Waters, and we thank you all so much for joining us here in studio. If you like what you heard and you want to hear more great live music here, you can visit us at kexp.org. We are listener-powered. You can make a contribution anytime and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can continue to discover great live music here on KEXP, where the music matters. Once again, a big thank you to Screaming Females for joining us live in studio here on KEXP Seattle. Discover great music at kexp.org.